attacking different things. My apologies for interrupting you, Jose. Um, I've just realized I hadn't been recording. So we're 10 minutes into the call. Uh, back to what you were saying. So these two projects, the two projects being Neobooks and our protocols, um, mm -hmm. I think share um, share the same reason for existing. And I think they share much the same energy of why. Um, and and I think that that would be beneficial to explore those two things because I think there's we've done some work on the mechanical side of things that hasn't been done on the Nia book side. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and I think there's some stuff that's happened on the Nia book side that hasn't happened on on our protocols. And so I, I really think that there would be a benefit of sitting down and sort of saying, Let's look at this in a, a little bit more holistic way um, to understand where these overlaps are and, you know, either benefit or, or somehow see how, how these things can um, accelerate the, the development of, of one another. So that, that's my thinking. It, it happened this weekend as I, I kept reflecting on um, – why we haven't moved as far as I think many of us would like to on mm -hmm. neo books. Um, and I think it may be that we're, we're kind of stuck in not sort of stepping away from the day to day meetings or the, the weekly meetings and thinking sort of like big picture. And I think you did that big picture thinking early on, but I haven't, I haven't seen that kind of conversation happen since. Um. Can you say more about what you see as those big picture conversations? I think I know what you mean, but I'm not sure. And also I'll say when Pete and I tried to solve some of the technical issues, hey, Rick, um, when Pete and I tried to solve some of the technical issues, the, those conversations didn't really resonate in, in the room. So Pete and I were interested, for example, in what are the ways to comment on or edit or collaboratively edit a nugget? And we sort of went there, but that 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 worked for Pete and for me, but not for everybody else. Um, so I, I don't I don't know which other I, I think there's we've so we've been kind of going at this in a pragmatic from the inside out way without looking around and joining forces or comparing, which is which is I really like what you're suggesting. Um, and you just muted, so I imagine you're interrupted as you're running your errands right now. There you are. You're back. No, I'm actually oh, back. Back. Oh my God, you're fully back. I'm I'm uh, yes. I'm not sure I can handle that. Uh, Rick, Rick um, at the top of the call, Jose was outside with a cap on running an errand. So he is now materialized in his usual ambit. In my space. Um, yeah. So MySpace, what I didn't take wonder. Pardon me? My space didn't take wonder. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I think there's still some remnants. Uh, oh, there might, <laughs> they yeah. might still be barely alive, like quivering in the corner. Yeah. Um, so I, I think. I think the questions that resonated for me this weekend when I was thinking about it a bit was um, the questions around, um, say, for example, um, the idea of the noise versus the signal, the idea of, um, thank you, Jax, I enjoyed that article uh, on the... Um, uh, plastic, right? Um, where we are creating so much stuff, it's like the plastic that that we are creating. Digital, and digital throwing, plastic, right? Digital plastic, right? Yeah, We're creating so much and digital ecosystem. Yeah. yeah, and and this whole sort of like, what are we attacking? What are we dealing with? What is it that we're trying to sort of? Um, address. And I think that then answers the question of, well, if we're trying to address these issues, then the type of approach that we want to do to this isn't necessarily to be another book publisher kind of idea. And I know that that's not what you're, you've said, but it feels that way sometimes in our conversations here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that what I think we're looking at is this opportunity to say, how do we look at information 
from a building block process and not as a having people simply push their their thoughts their ideas out in in absence of collaboration mm -hmm. right because once we start to collaborate first it changes our ideas <laughs> dramatically um two if we actually are building, you know, and you like, you know, I like the idea of starting from my first principles perspective. But if, if we start from a place where we, there's some grounding, whatever that is, uh, then every conversation goes back to, well, then, if that's true, what's the thing? And it doesn't have to be first principles, but it has to be something, I think, because otherwise, we're always in this ether and in it's difficult. So what's that grounding thing for, for neobooks? And whatever that grounding thing is, looking at that with this, um, this larger, what is it we're doing? Because I think that what we're doing is really important. And I'm, I'm not sure that that's clear enough. Um, I think we sense it. I've sensed it. But I haven't... Uh, I certainly don't feel like that's conversation we've had here that was clear enough for me. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've talked about it makes books better. It makes, it allows us to, to do these things and the nuggets and all that stuff. I think that's sort of middle ground. And the conversation that I'm thinking about is a little bit bigger than that. Like really why? Mm -hmm. And then, okay, now what do we ground these nuggets on? So I think the nuggets are are the right thing, but I think they're missing that why, and I think they're missing that how. Mm -hmm. I like that. Let me go quiet for a second in case Jax or Rich want to jump in on that. Oh, it's a good conversation to have, and um, and this is my third session, I think, with all of That's you, right. which, which is uh, wonderful and. Uh, I have been sort of musing on this uh, quite a bit so that I can make sure that I'm able to add something of value as we go through. And I, I'm being one um, and the way that I think is to sort of, you know, see, you know, this is like nuggets, see a dot here and see a dot there, and I'm I'm very much out in an exploratory phase at the moment and putting things together. Um have you come across the legacy project at all? I'll pop it in the. Sounds familiar to me. Yeah, it's, it's, I'll pop it in there. It's oh, actually I'm not probably. So it's, um, it's why I'm bringing that up is it's part the legacy project is, um, and I'm not as familiar as I want to be with some of the work that's happening there. Um, but it comes from um, Canada, from the uh, Seven Generation Group. And what they're trying to do there, and I'm not sure exactly how they're trying to do it, but they're trying to pick up the, the gems or the nuggets from ancient wisdom and bring it through into future wisdom. And um, that idea has struck me that there's some similarities with what's happening here too, which is trying to find the collective wisdom, uh, if you want to use that word, or the knowledge or the information, what's important to be carried through and how do we, and so it's not an individual voice necessarily, but it's an idea and you um, thought it's a nugget. It, it's something that has been shaped. So it's, there's something in there which is similar around that co um, collectiveness and the collective, uh, uh, what is of value, what is collectively carried through. And it feels to me that there's something in there and looking um, at the R protocols, once again, I think there's that collective, uh, some kind of shared collective uh, essence, which is also being carried through, which is diff which is a completely different style project to an individual um, authorial voice mm -hmm. book. Not saying it can't be, but it's it's a different quest and I know you've had these discussions and you come you've already got this background pretty well bedded down uh, Jose when you raise this uh and start looking at it your question really 
is around um, you know, a little around what is it that's being carried through and how is it that it's being carried through. Um, and I'm hearing with what you're saying is there's a sort of sense of needing to be ground, grounded and so that you're not, um, so you're able to be, all of us able to be productive with what if that essence is. And when you're describing that, you can kind of, I can kind of see that we've got like a, I'm just, I'm not a biologist, <laughs> the nucleus that's going through with this, with, there's a point in the middle, but it's fuzzy around the edges. So where are we as we go through here? Is it in this centre part or is it at the edges? And I think from what you're saying, you're, we're at the edges and trying to find our way in. And Jerry, you've done the big thinking and you've had that, you know, the setting, setting it up. And um, what you, I'm hearing here for you is that you're actually in the um, you had a look at both ends of these and then found where well, the most pragmatic way to go is in the is in this middle. Let's build the middle so it starts feeling more grounded and collect and um, uh, cohesive as it goes along. But it's still in the building phase. So either way you go, it's going to feel still fuzzy. Um, the uh, I'm quite keen to get going with one of those projects actually, and I've had you know, it's like oh okay, this is it's actually um, just want to if this is helpful, it's actually really exciting because it's a very different way of seeing the way that information and knowledge comes through. And I, I think that there's a point that this you have to stay in that uncomfortable space while it starts to gel um, and uh, looking at the comparisons as you have with the uh, protocols because you you know so you understand that one too and finding other comparisons may help over the coming times um solidify that a little bit as we go forward um, my last comment is that there's a risk in here when you start feeling uncomfortable to start fixing things and and locking them down and the the risk of that is that you end up with not necessarily the thing that we want to be evolving. Uh, and sometimes the clearer, clearer voices, the clearer voices usually will win in that, but it might be that there's the fuzzier voices that need to come more to the table. So um, more response. I don't have a suggestion as yet because I'm still getting my head around it, um, but I'm really appreciating this conversation. That's that's super helpful. A tiny thing, and then Rick, um... Uh, there's a thought in my brain, how might we blend the best of the old and new, which is very meaningful to me. And I just put a link to it in the chat. Um, and I, and the legacy project you just pointed to, I did not have it all in the brain. It sounds really interesting. I, 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 like that, that's a huge and important conversation as far as I can tell. Uh, we need to sort out how these modern tools actually can be made better by interacting with what we used to know, but forgot or have stamped out or whatever. When, and in OGM, we've had a bunch of different conversations around that. Pete Kaminsky started a, a book a book circle around uh, the dawn of everything, Graber and Wengrow's book. Uh, so they so a bunch of people met, you know, in a separate set of calls around that, and then uh, that folded. But we've been trying to sort of uh, walk around the, the fuzzy orb, the giant hairball, perhaps we can call it, because there actually, there actually is a book titled Orbiting the Giant Hairball. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, Rick, thoughts? Well, I think it's a good question to, to lead off with. The Your old... audio is really low for some uh, reason. Can you hear me now? Yes, better. Okay, um, I'll speak up a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I think the question is a good one because what is the old and what's the upside and downsides of the old and what is the new? And likewise, what's the upside and downside of the new? And I think, <clears throat> you know, this calls for a, a different type of learning paradigm that we're currently doing on Zoom calls. Um, and, um, you know, I, because, you know, we're trying to create a living community and most Zoom calls are not structured to do that very well. Um, and some of the work- Sort of. I, I mean, w I, I would argue that OGM is a living community of sorts. It's just that we don't have the action capacity that we might like us to have. But we're, 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 we're we have some kind of life that's happening like in well, here among I, between I, us you know I, I understand that but i'm just saying what you know that that's you know your view of the upside i can see some downsides and and you know how uh, for example uh, it can create more generative dialogue it for me at least it tends to be too content focused 
Uh, it's not focusing on interrelational processes about how to form living ecosystems along the line that I think Jose was alluding to, but I'm not sure about. In terms of the, the book is really the background, the foreground should be the living learning community, the living intergenerational transformation of collaborative learning community, which we don't have. Um, and uh, that's what I'm talking about. So we have to completely envision it's a completely different way of doing things, which is much more group centered, less uh, dominant on uh, stages on the stage. It's focusing guides on the sides, facilitating conversations where um, there's a much more sense of equitable distribution and uh, ability to participate, which means breaking into small groups and having micro uh, community, you know, die, you know, Dave Snowden does this sort of work of people working in triads and then rotating in triads. And so it becomes much more of a sort of organic um, emergent thing where you're not really sure what's coming out of the brew. And that's the generative phase of it. Then there's the strategic side of it. So in terms of thinking the new, I think we have to think completely different and different modalities of evoking uh, people's um, way of thinking. And I will say, I think songs do have a role in that, even if you find them <laughs> too complex. Interesting enough, I, I, I just did another one, which is called Kamala Joy. And my wife has been sharing with her friends and a couple of them are in the media. So oh, this is great. This, this needs to be, this needs to go further. But the thing is, is that how do you capture people uh, in a variety of different ways? And, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll put the, the song in there so that you can uh, decide for yourself. <laughs> and then, and then cool. this morning I had a field day on, on writing one called Ugly Freedom, Ugly Patriotism. And I know Jose doesn't want to go into the, into the political sinkhole. Um, but what I will say... <laughs> What I will say, if we don't deal with politics, we're not going to solve these problems. You can't divorce yourself from politics. You can stay in apolitical arenas, which is great, and I have done, but I've opted out of them because they're not going to be able to solve our problems. So anyway, I'll share that one and also the one I did this morning, which has already got a, a response from somebody on LinkedIn who, guy, who, who described me as the misguided muse. Intriguing. I'm sure that's not good branding you want to pick up on, but still. Oh, no, no, I've refuted it. I, I went to his website and I noticed that he's a, <laughs> as you might expect, a Trump supporter and his lockdown and dichotomous thinking. And I took one of his postings and put it there to to illustrate his. But, you know, if, we don't, if we're not willing to confront people's um, uh, fundamentalist thinking, which is highly dysfunction, such as the white, you know, such as the national Christ, um, Christian uh, nationalism, nationalism. Thank you. Then, you know, um, you know, you know, we, we, we can be polite and ignore them, but they're not going to go away. And they've done very well for themselves over the last 40, 50 years. So mm -hmm. credence to their ability to mobilize their ecosystems in a very galvanized way in such a such a way that tails wagging the dog. So there we have it. Thank you. That was all really fruitful and useful and generative and good in the mix. Um, what does what everyone just said mean for what we ought to do for the next couple of calls? Because a piece of what we're doing right now is the Neo book pops, which is either like a cool way to get something working and a rhythm going or a distraction into too finite and narrow a, a task. I don't know. Uh, but I, th I think that my feeling is that it's a good thing to do here just as a, as a shared activity. But, but my feeling from what you all just said is we need to be breaking open some of the bigger conversations and we also need to do the compare and contrast exercise that Jose uh, has put in front of us of, hey, there's this art project thing and, and it seems like it's really parallel to Neobooks. How might we uh, build something together or share what we know? You're muted. What I, I think what I meant to say there more is is just learn from each other mm -hmm. um, and look at it in a more holistic way. Because I'll be honest, um, the work we've been doing with our protocols is probably four or five years old, but it, it's really focused on a specific sort of need, right? And it hasn't been thought of as dealing with this broader issue, the broader issues, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so it, if, if, and this is a question, not an answer, if this is an emergent thing as Neobooks is, of a bunch of emergent things that are happening out there, if we go and look at what it is that, why this is happening, that we may actually find a lot of um, other projects out there, as pointed out by Jax, um, that are that are on the same page. And so we're not really doing something all that unique, though we may have a unique perspective on it. And if we're not doing something all that unique, we may already have a broad community of people who are thinking about doing this from that bigger perspective. So that maybe they haven't thought about how to write books differently. Maybe they haven't thought about how to do protocols differently, but they are thinking about this bigger picture. And if we can capture the bigger picture, we can actually see a broader perspective. And this comes again from Jax's comments last week, right? This is this wasn't something that I'd been thinking about. Um, and so it like broadened my thinking to oh, wait a minute, this is emerging all around us from a slightly different angle. We have a broader community to engage here to understand why this is happening. I think the how later uh, speaks to the to then understanding that why better because you know, a Neil Books idea and an R Protocols idea is emerging from something and what that thing is um, more clearly understood by us, then I think brings us closer to the folks that are already in that space already uh, themselves, right? They, they too have probably emerged from one place or another and are starting to see that there is this bigger umbrella that we are all under. And approaching um, those folks from that language, I think, might be very interesting. Do I have the right link for the R Protocols project? Is that the right R Protocols project in the in the chat? Uh, probably yes. Rprotocols.org. Yeah, and it may not be fully functioned. Well, it is not fully functioned still, but you may be able to get a sense of okay. What's but going there's on a, there. there's there's a lot there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just a little bit of what's actually in the repository. Cool. It just hasn't been cleaned up yet. Uh, That's great, though. I I appreciate it. I will add that to my brain because I didn't have that page. I didn't hadn't looked at it. And then it's part of our com our communities. Is the larger project? How does that work? So uh, there's our collaboratives. Our collaboratives, right? Right. And uh, and our collaboratives is is both our protocols and our communities, which is part of the broader radical world stuff. Cool. So is it rcollabs.org? Do you also have that? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah. But that's also a work in progress. We haven't published that. Sweet. Okay. So there's so that so our collabs doesn't resolve to a site yet. Uh I'm not sure if it does. It, at it, this it point. says our collabs.org is a totally awesome idea still being worked on. Check back later. So it seems to not be a thing yet. Uh, there's some, there's at least one domain that's working. I'm not sure which or one. Or is it our collaboratives? Does that work maybe? Uh, our collaboratives is one of uh, the other domains, yeah. Okay, our collaboratives is nothing right now. So okay. that, that's not working either. All right. So, uh, so yeah, we've played with testing some of the language and stuff like that, but it's not fully functional. Cool. So as you can tell, this is all just emerging as we speak. Yeah, which is exciting. It's all happening as we sit here. And our communities, just so you know, is um, is actually working with local co-ops to build a collaborative community here in San Jose and uh, in San Diego um, to build a collaborative community using protocols and using much of this as a shared collective information set. Um, but also uh, working with the same lawyers, same accountants, same um, marketers in order to build a collaborative <clears throat> business community rather than individuals trying to do everything themselves. 
So is this just for the business community, Jose? Uh, it's starting with the yeah, small businesses, co-ops primarily that are already of the same mindset. Mm -hmm. right. um, and so we're just sort of, rather than trying to convert existing businesses, we're working with co-ops that are struggling to survive yeah. in this. It makes, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. Uh, and and so there's a lot of interest from those folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in those domains, I can understand why you would want to be apolitical. <laughs> well, but I, I'm apolitical because I think fighting the fight keeps us in the battle. I think we need to start new things. And um, the new things that we start in a new mindset uh, if we keep devolving back to the old mindset, we keep ourselves in that same space. And so how do we do this collaboratively? And yeah, some people might be red. Some people might be blue. Some people yeah. might be purple. I don't give a shit. Um, yeah. Because in reality, all of those things are bullshit. And the, the thing that really matters is they're humans. They want, to, they want their families to be happy. They want to have good lives. They want to be healthy. That's what they want. All of us want that. I don't care what color party you're at. You know, I, I just I, I just want to maybe add a slightly different perspective to it, having been down this, many of us have been down these rabbit holes before. But uh, I couldn't agree with you more that if we could simply go high, we wouldn't have to go low. But the metaphor I would like to say is that you still have to go up, go high in order to clean out the gutter. Um, you know, there, there is going to be this polarization. It's not getting any better. Uh, I wish I, I wish I shared your optimism about an apolitical stance making a difference in this domain. I'm afraid that I'm not optimistic about it. So remaining silent about it. So we, we, we have significant differences in philosophical orientation. And I just came from another group where this issue came up, actually. And it was people who are predominantly in the business community, which supposedly is more apolitical, but we know corporations are running the show. So it's a complete facade about keeping LinkedIn apolitical while the corporations are basically calling the shots over the political domain. So when you zoom out, you know, I, I, I you know, obviously we have different strategies, but in this other group, um, the same thing applied. And I says, well, how do you apply that to the health and social sectors? And I'll just say one last thing, which is actually some of the some very interesting thinking is coming from the forward party about this, uh, about being sort of nonpartisan, which I prefer to use than apolitical, um, which is a different frame. Um, and uh, how can people who have diversity of political philosophy be part of one party, which is what the forward party is trying to do. If you've not looked at their readings, you might want to take a peek at that because you might get some ideas about how to uh, stay on that path. I wish I wish I wish it would work, but I'm not optimistic. I I do I wish so too. <laughs> <laughs> well we can agree on that. <laughs> well and and so far so good. Uh, we've actually had interest in communities that I would never have expected. There's one thing that left and right in the United States agree on. The more people own more businesses, the better. Right? So co-ops and um, small business ownership is both parties agree with that. And so we think that there is a, a potential to actually leverage that um, common sense idea that instead of having lots of employees that we have lots of business owners is actually a better thing and so that's the intent how do we facilitate business ownership but in a collective way mm -hmm. no I, I i agree with the sentiment we just have different methods that's all yeah we again I, I agree that i think everybody wants the same thing so <laughs> Well, similar things, I would say. I would say similar, you know, um, overlapping similar, but not necessarily because, you know, if you think about the, the, our commercial hyper-consumer society, we don't need more of that, you know. So uh, it depends on how small businesses are working and what the purpose, the ultimate purposes are of the small businesses. Anyway. Makes sense. 
so where would we like to aim this little vessel? I know that we thought we set out on what we thought was a three hour tour and it's been a bit longer than that. <laughs> well, I, I would like to um, advocate for experimenting more with different learning processes that are done on, on the online. Um, and where, 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 where have you, where have you experienced the most? And I just came from a meeting by the way, which I thought was terribly well run, terribly badly run where it was just the inner group talking and it really wasn't involving the 35 people at all in any of the conversation. It was like, I'm, 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 I'm sitting here and I'm supposed to be on the group, but I was still thinking there, I'm thinking this is, this is an inside group conversation. And it really wasn't making any concerted effort to reach out to other people and involve them in an hour and a half session, which I thought was not a very effective use of time and people's resources. Um, cause I know once I get involved in that, I start multitasking. I don't participate. I'm listening, half listening. I'm looking up stuff and whatever. I'm not fully present. And, you know, you, you can't do, you can't build a learning community when people are in states of distraction, um, and not, and partial engagement if you're trying to develop learning communities. So we need better learning methods. Part of the new element that you were advocating for, Jerry, I say, we have to have some innovation and experimentation about how to do it more effectively. Um, Jose, does that resonate for you? Because I think that that thinking about the dynamics of what we're doing, as opposed to the products of what we're doing, is is interesting and fruitful. Um, what kinds of collaboration or interaction do any of you think that that supposes or suggests? I'm not sure I understand what Rick is suggesting. Um, for for me, let's say, for example, that we said, oh, really what we're talking, the why of, the, of, of what we're doing is um, that we're drowning in, in crap. Um, and even a good book is 90% crap. And I'm just going to say that. Uh, not that I believe that necessarily. Uh, and so we end up with all this clutter. That means that most people aren't reading the good stuff because they can't get through the clutter, blah, 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 right? Let's, let's just assume that that's a big why for why we're doing all of this, right? Then that leads me to, to ask the question, if that's the why, who else is looking at this why? And, and is approaching it from a different perspective, trying to deal with it in whatever way that they're dealing with it. Is that a community of people that are already trying to practice something different, but don't have a means by which to practice that something different? But they already have that appetite. They already have that desire. And, and I'm using this as just a, a, an example. Do we then reach out to those folks and say, hey, we have a clear message here of what it is we're doing. We have a clear understanding of why we're doing it. And we think we have a, 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 a starting point of how we're going to do this. Um, but we'd like more insights. We'd like more uh, understanding of what it is that you would like to see, because you seem to see the same thing we see as a problem. How do we then go about doing this in a better way? Um, and, and I think that could be had between us because of, of the, these two projects already, uh, but it could happen in a much broader way. I think my suspicion is that there is a broad enough way to, to look at this that takes us to a point of clarity that would make a lot more sense to communicate than to simply say, Neo books, it's nuggets, and we are going to build better books because we have these nuggets. If we say, hey, here's the big overarching issue. We have clarity around that. Here's a whole bunch of people that have clarity around that. And they're doing it this way, this way, this way, this way. And we think there's a way to do that that's complementary with that. Therefore, we already have a community of practitioners, um, even though they're practicing in a slightly different way. 
they're practicing the same thing we're practicing. It's just that they're doing it in, for that domain. And so we're looking at this other domain uh, that is um, that is related to, to larger works of, of messaging. And that larger work of messaging uh, could be beneficial by having these relationships with these other pieces. And to me, that then leads to what's the practice? How do we practice these things? How do we have these conversations? Because I think that conversation stemming from that understanding of the overarching issue that we're all sensing and therefore reacting to um, is what's going to align us with a lot of people. Maybe I can just clarify saying you didn't quite understand. Let me give you an example of, of some learning design ideas that might be useful to think about how to co-create ongoing learning communities that uh, can stay above the noise and engage more meaningful in de dealing with our wicked problems. Um, and, and there's lots of different ways of doing it. And I'll just throw out a few ideas. Um, and actually, this came from, um, you know, I just... Was it this week or was it last week? Um, when Living Between Worlds, they did a, a session where they broke into triads. Where I said, "Oh, that's great! I really look forward to that." And the 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 thing that uh, didn't work for me was that it was framed in such a way that they wanted people to respond to a particular question in a certain way, and my response was, "Well, I've already." I've already discussed it. I don't feel much energy around this question. So immediately, you know, to me, that violated one of the sort of um, principles of, of collaborative learning is you have to negotiate the agenda or have some scope around engagement so people can engage in things that they want to talk about or are willing to talk about, even if they want to avoid it. Um, and so the idea of breaking into triads and building up a structure while there may be a theme question that people have choice over what they would like to discuss and what's meaningful, or it could be a poem, it could be a song or something that evokes people in a way in real time where they have to make sense of their own experiences and then break into triads and do it and then debrief and then recycle that two or three times within a session. But the thing is, is that those things typically are only once off. They're not ongoing. And our problems are ongoing. And unless we're trying to, you know, uh, create a sort of fermenting ground where people can start learning and discussing these things in new ways, then I think we're, we're, we're you know, we're, are, we're seriously diminishing our human um, hidden talents and potential for working together and solving problems. And I think we've got a huge abundance of potential that we're just not tapping into whatsoever. And we're and we're not designing things with you. Well, what would it take to really unleash, you know, the hidden talents that Adam Grant talks about, um, and the latent potential that can come from shifting from co uh, competitive to collaborative or cooperative paradigms? Um, so, you know, I I still think we're still in in our infancy in terms of learning, and unless we start seriously thinking about what how we can design these differently such that the living community becomes the foreground and the near book is really the background, not the foreground. Jax, is this working for you? Are you? I'm taking a little bit of time to <laughs> digest and process. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, um, it seems to me just on the back, Rick, what um, you're talking about, sort of that method of of bringing the living um, energy in there, which makes me think about living systems and and uh, something that I'm not sure if it was Stuart or David last week talked about uh, emergence, and I didn't fully appreciate the con the, his comment last. Yeah, like I didn't understand. It, but in this context now, I think there is about emergence. There's something that's emerging and it's about how we're able to faci facilitate that or allow it to, to come up. Uh, in a group of four, we're going to have very different perspectives about what how we think that should happen or what we need it to happen. And it seems to me that the um, it's a similar thing to what's happening with the neo books, which is that there's a concept and trying to seek collaboration and find what might 
emerged from that and uh, about whether the why, why this is happening or the how, I, I, I think we could get sort of, um, I don't think it would matter. I think there's room for all of those conversations in there. And in terms of whether the book's foreground or background um, or even with the POPs idea, having something practical that you actually, or tangible that you're actually putting together each week and then going, oh, well, that didn't work that well as last week's did and, oh, I'm starting to see it because I've got this object. There's a there's a value to that. Um, Jose, your mention, you know, that grounding sort of sense, that's what comes with a with a with something that's built. And Rick, that how um is kind of the well, how do we want to go about that building that thing? Like there's a potential for those to sit together. With neo books, we've got something that's already developed, you know, that is um that's being worked on. So I think if there's the place for that and um I was having a look last night at the trust work there for example um which actually provides something that could offer uh look, I know um Jose you're very you you understand that our protocols feel very well um the like the seven generation people or whoever else is like they the emerging concepts that people are working on there there's something that this could actually then offer in I have to say I've been looking around this space now for a couple of years and it's 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 quite big uh and there's a lot there are communities and networks out there who are who are trying to do the same sorts of things at various levels of maturity uh, and I'm really you know it's part of yeah I'm, I'm on that mission to go and, which is probably why I'm here I have been wondering why I'm you know it's like oh well it's emergence just trust it there's something that comes through there um the all of that, the skill and the knowledge that's in the room, and and Rick, looking at you, that that uh, if that's allowed to come forward at different points and and start to contribute, not allowed to, but it, it will anyway. Uh, but if the environment's right for that to come forward, then that will happen naturally, dependent on who's in the room. And I think if a group like this is, it's um, very you know uh, gentle, it's intelligent and. Uh, and you're quite good at listening and understanding, and like that's a this a good process that's happening there. Mm, can I add anything more of value? I think they're just my thoughts, probably un, uncollected, but I'm, I'm gathering something here, which is I think this there's the the living system that's happening, and the emergence is the interesting part, and then how we connect uh, those dots without getting caught up in other other groups' agendas. Is it is an interesting question for us to chat, to consider? I, I would like us to think about um, having a practical outcome at each time, whether it's looking at a piece of work or whether it's connecting with something in the neo books. Just because I think it will keep us grounded as we go. So that would probably be my contribution. Thank you. Um, in the spirit of pragmatic stuff that seems to be right in, in the middle or in front of us. Um, I would love to learn more about our protocols, maybe on a separate call or maybe next week, this call, I don't know. Uh, and I, I kind of want to figure out, are there are protocols that I can adopt now that are complementary to whatever it is I'm doing um, so that I begin practicing some of the R protocols um, and incorporating them in the thinking that is now, you know, the nascent, the emergent thinking that is neobooks. Uh, and again, <clears throat> books are just one manifestation of what a neobook community might be doing. So neobooks is either a terrible naming or a good naming. It's, it's meant to be a, an attractor for people who, you know, think ideas live in books, but wait a minute, ideas actually need to be liberated. So another name for this community could be the idea liberation front. Um, I, I love the, the data. <laughs> if, have you guys ever seen the video for the data liberation front at Google? No, it's completely cute. So there's three or four Google engineers dressed in khakis, like military khakis, and they're holding keyboards as if they were AK-47s. <clears throat> and they're, they're, and this was years ago that Google created this little group or, or a group emerged out of Google that said, we need to make it so that if anybody wants to leave Google, they can easily do so with their own data. 
and most companies are busy like they're like you know a roach roach motels you're welcome to come in and do stuff and we want you to feed this thing and pour all your life into it but we don't we're going to make it hard we're going to create a barrier to exit so that you can't actually leave us easily and google was like nope nope screw that we want that so they created the data liberation front uh so in some sense, this is the ideal liberation front, would be a completely different name for this community and would mean different metaphors and different whatevers. But for me, from the from the neo-booksy perspective, it would adequately describe the activities of a community. Um, and there's probably other equally different ways of, of naming and thinking about <clears throat> and framing the activities that I think we're, we're about, excuse me. Um, so, um, so Jose, can we schedule something either separately or, or here next week to absolutely to... whatever I think, whatever works for for others. If if others aren't interested, then let's do it aside. And if others are interested, then let's do it together. And are you groovy uh, doing that? Do you want to invite anybody else in to do that uh, with us? Or, um, maybe. Maybe, uh, maybe invite uh, Doug and or uh, Lou to to join us on that as well. There are cool. two lawyers that I've been working with. Oh, okay. Uh, you one of which you know, yep. Doug. Right, right. Oh, good. Okay. Um, let's see if the original data liberation front website is still available. Oh, it's interesting. So dataliberation.org now re reverts directly to a support page at Google <laughs> uh, of how to download your data. So the, the 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 front, the funny part of it, I think, is gone. Let's see if the Wikipedia page still exists. Yes. Okay. So I will copy this and paste it into our chat. Um, so let's let's uh, maybe that's our agenda item for next Monday. Um, and if there's a video or anything that I should like familiarize myself with between now and then, then we're I'm not good here. communicators as you. Uh, <laughs> we, we we just gotta dig in the trenches and uh, communication is our is secondary. Okay, us. good, good. What's primary? Uh, data. Figuring no, it's just figuring Hustling out through how the it piece? works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's so communication for us. Unfortunately, it's, I'm not proud of it. Uh, it's it's kind of uh, what we we do secondary to to whatever we're working on. Awesome. So th maybe that's another point of of collaboration. Sounds great. That that'd be great. And and a piece of this is about communicating with one another about all these things, and then putting them in the world as nuggets of useful info. Uh, that other people can pick up and riff on and adopt if they want to. And I think that that's really important is if somebody wanted to do a, a, a neo book based on our projects or whatever that is, there should be a way to just say, oh, great. I, I take this, add water, stir, and I'm, and I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And that seems good and pragmatic. Could you um, find the agenda? You were, you were just flush that out a little bit. Oh sure, I, I'm so I'm I'm hoping uh, Jose and and Doug and whoever uh, can present our protocols and and what they've got so far. We can sort of talk about them enough that we can understand them, and then we can figure out together which parts of that marry very nicely to what NeoBooks is up to, that we could adopt and put into oh, practice see. for what we're doing. And that that sounds like a call. Oh, you mean the re you're referring to the protocols that were on the website? Is that? Really? Correct. Okay, just clarifying, contextualize. Thank you. Yep. 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 Yeah. What um, I, I, I'd also like to propose is thinking about if we're doing something new, what is it, and how are the learning methods different? What, how would you design things differently in hosting things that would build on um, neo books, um, and um, experimenting with that. So um, now, when you say learning, like there's a whole huge world of uh, learning systems, um, which most of which leave me pretty cold. Uh, but, uh, you know, L&D learning and development is a big practice inside of corporations. It, it's like a, an entire yawning pit of stuff over there. Mm -hmm. Do you mean that or do you just mean no, I was something more else? In terms of, I, I was thinking more in terms of how do you set up um, 
learning environments where it enables that sort of um, you know complex adaptive systems emergent you're, you're creating opportunities to, to engage more in dialogue than serial monologues um, focusing on things that people feel vested in talking about or are triggered to um, talk about um, so that you know you come away from the engagement thinking that that was worth my time having that conversation I discovered things and I said things that I hadn't even thought about beforehand, um, you know, so that, I mean, that speaks to the emergence of, you know, people's collective contributions when there's interactions between those things that people haven't heard themselves say before and something else comes out of it differently. So to paraphrase, if, see if I get this right. Um, I'm familiar with some group facilitation formats like Open Space and World Cafe and yeah. whatever, whatever. And they each have, okay, collect up and no more than five people on a table, put down a sheet of paper on the table with some crayons or some marker pens yeah. or some Sharpies, have a conversation like this. Now, five of you leave one person at the table, five of you move to the next table, uh, blah, 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 blah. There's like a protocol yeah, for doing World lots, Cafe, for example. Of, yeah, yeah, there's lots of templates out there. And, yeah. But, but I, think, I think a piece of what you might be saying is, is there something like that that we should or could invent or find and use that will really uh, help us in the um, emerge and share kind of process that is this set, this confluence of projects? Is that sort of what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, similar to what the conversation, if, you, if you're having a, a group of 40 people come to a meeting and you know that, you know, 90% of them are going to be in the passive learning mode. Uh, which is not necessarily the good use of time. And how do you structure things such that people are making personal connections, exchanging ideas? Yeah, they are. Cool. Okay. So, and I like that. I, I really love group process. And I think, I think imagining a group process that would make this all work better is a is a nice sub project. So cool. Uh, Jax, you were about to jump in. I think. Uh no. I think I was uh, just understanding where Rick was coming from there too, and you. Um, we're probably all on the same lines there. You know, it's facilitating group, group process, um, uh, which is group learning and group design. So, yeah, yeah, it's good. Interesting. Cool. Other thoughts on this? Anybody? Well, one thing that, I, you know, I, I mentioned this, and I know you, you've already got things set up, but, you know, even the things you do on Thursday, you know, use that as a, as a um, prototyping field, so to speak, for testing out different ways of doing things. Um, and uh, I know Living Between Worlds tried something, and I, I think they, it was a gallant effort, but for me, it, it didn't work. But, you know, unless you get feedback from, from people saying what worked and didn't work and how mm -hmm. you continuously iterate it, then, you know, you're going to fall into the same, you know, assumptions that set up something that wasn't, was something that was suboptimal. Um, and uh, I mean, to me, that's the, you know, that's if you have a living community, it's always correcting, modifying, adapting depending upon the context, circumstances, and, and the, the personalities involved. Cool. So I'm adding to my brain a marker for next week that we're going to do the our protocols dive. Um, Out of curiosity, in, in the protocols, do you have uh, parameters around setting up uh, group learning as well or not? Uh, right now, what we've done is built a very early stage framework of data structures that allows for people to use to build protocols like we build software. Okay. So okay. you're going to be able to okay. uh, write a protocol, fork a protocol, have you know 10 different versions of the same protocol. And some people prefer this version, other people prefer that version. How do we do that? How do we distinguish them? How do people adopt them? Uh, how do the people extract them and use them in their, um, in their websites or offline? Um, what does it mean to adopt? Um, and, and so, yes, and microformats is, is kind of part of that process of what we've been playing with. Um, and, and what's the data structure and all those kinds of things. So that's really the, the, the stuff that we've been dealing with. In part, because we know we have already um, a user base for the consumption of protocols. Because the, the organizations we work with are like, well, I need an agreement for that. I need a process for that. Where do I go? And it's like, 
we don't want you to go buy it from a, a single lawyer who's going to give you something that's unique uh, to him or her. Um, we want to do this as a communal thing. So we keep each other in this new raised level of behavior um, in a collective level of behavior rather than uh, falling back to, I went online, I found something and it's not exactly what we need, but I'll just use that because it's easier to do. And it's not at all collaborative in nature, right? But it's the thing that we know how to do. Um, it's like, so It's like open source, open source protocols. Exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. And uh, think of it as, as libraries that would normally be used to help your development project, um, but as a library to help your actions. How do you do whatever it is that you do? And, and our concept is that it it's not just in an organization, but that could come into your personal life as well. So how do you think of protocols uh, between you and your partner and you and your family and you and your neighbors as a way to think about Instead of establishing rules and telling people that they can't, you kids can't do this anymore, that we sit down, we work out, which is the best protocol for us as a family? Oh, that didn't work. Let's tweak the protocol. Everybody can tweak the protocol. Everybody can adjust the protocol. And so it changes us from this world of hierarchy and somebody telling us what to do and how to do it versus us communally working on what we can do together. and approaching this idea of protocols as a uh, experimentation. It's not a fixed given that's the answer. It's the best we know so far. If it doesn't work, one of us can change it. One of us can upgrade it and then have a conversation to update everybody else what they are adopted. Now, Jerry, you're on mute. Oh, yeah. thank, thank you so much. I didn't notice at all. Um, is our protocols part of the Fediverse or IndieWeb projects, or is it using the stuff that they've come up with? Because it feels like it's similar to that, at least in spirit. Not that I, not that I know of. Okay. Because those would be communities to reach out to like right away. And there's yeah. a bunch of people who've been like Kevin Marks, Tomtech, Chelek, and a bunch of others who've been working on some piece of this for 25 years. Yes. And, and uh, Lou was part of a project out of the UK early on uh, as well that was trying to do this and it all sort of collapsed a few years ago. So, okay. Um, so there's some of these that have that sort of perked up and then sort of faded away. Right. And then there's others that are sort of limping along. I don't know of any that are successfully sort of moving forward. Um, and so we're hoping that uh, if they exist, that we can connect with them cool and different groups take different angles i mean um i think it's fediverse that uses activity pub a lot as their main sort of communication protocol a bunch of people don't really like activity pub and that creates this architectural conflict mm -hmm. like really early on because if there's a main communication <laughs> protocol that group a loves and is using and group b or at least group a tolerates and is using and group B really doesn't like, then they're yeah. going to have a hard time. You might and have it's always the same thing, yeah. An adapter and so in the somewhere. we're sort of like, we've built this protocol uh, for how to exchange protocols. <laughs> kind of this um, obvious loop there. Um, so basically, if anybody introduces a, a better way to do this protocol, um, Great. It's another protocol to add to these things. So none of this is fixed. Um, the approach here is that everything's an experiment, including the development of this as, as its own protocol. Uh, have you, so, have, go sorry, ahead. go ahead. Uh, have you uh, talked to Gordon Brander about his Noosphere protocol project? No. Uh, cause he, uh, he's dropped it now, but he worked for a couple of years on this blogged intensively cares a lot about it. it. It was more toward knowledge graphs and less about documents and nuggets the way we're thinking about them. But to me, knowledge graphs are just the connection graph of nuggets. 
Um, mm -hmm. So he would be an interesting person to contact at some point. Do you have a? Uh, I know him. I, yeah. uh, he's, he's a friend, and I'm going to uh, do a little screen share for a second just to put that into the call. So here's the Noosphere protocol. Here's Gordon Brander. He was part of uh, Tools for Thinking uh, group that I worked with uh, through Betaworks, which is an accelerator in New York. Uh, but Noosphere protocol is based on uh, Teilhard de Chardin and Vladimir Vernadsky's notion of a sphere of reason or wisdom which is a, a lovely metaphor. Uh, Talhard de Chardin was trying to use it to explain how human knowledge is like uh, Christianity and Christian ways of thinking. And I'm like, ooh, that sounds difficult. Um, but anyway, the, the, the Noosphere Protocol is an interesting thing that had a lot of thought put into it. Awesome. I will take a look at that. Thank and you. I will put a, and I will put a link to that thought in my brain in the chat right now. And I've connected it to my notes for this call. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, huh. Lots of people have been breaking their heads on these things for many a year. Yeah. And I think that, by the way, I've been working on this for probably about 15 years, but it's, it's been sort of back in the data level, right? I think what makes me feel like maybe there is an opportunity to do this now versus, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago is uh, that the people who would use this actually have the technology to use it meaning you put it on a cell phone, they can pull up a protocol, they can adopt a protocol, they can have a conversation, they can have facilitated conversations around protocols. It, we, we have the means by which to make this very reachable to the average person um, and not have it be uh, a, um, you know, a, a computer science approach, you know, mindset and an approach to things, right? Um, how do we make this very much about a social interaction and not a technical interaction? Cool. But we need the technology to be as smooth and fluid and easy to use uh, so that those folks can do that in that easy way. And uh, if we can get there, I think that there is an appetite for this. Great. We have 15 minutes left in our normal call time. Uh, if anybody wants to bring up a topic or we can wrap early, whatever your prefs are. I've been uh, a little bit distracted trying to get that, that darn call up online before oh, we finish. Gotcha. Uh, you know what? Take your time and then just ping us and we'll we'll do the pop, you know, uh, asynchronously uh, offline. Sorry, I, I didn't, I've forgotten that you were trying to maybe finish that. Don't, don't worry about doing that right this second, but if, if today or tomorrow, you can, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll do it today. I'd like to get it out so that we by the bat signal. Yeah. Perfect. That sounds great. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, then I'll, I'll pause for now. And, uh, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know of anything else, uh, if, if we have the conversation next week about protocols, I think that Hopefully what we can do is not get too much into the weeds with it, but actually sort of like, why? Why is this happening? Why is this necessary? Why is this something that um, that we think can work? And maybe if we can have that conversation, I think that would be, to me, that would be valuable because that opening up uh, my eyes, at least, to that broader picture um, gives us something new. And maybe it's something that some or all of you already have that broader picture. Cool. Sounds great. Um, Jack, you and I have a call scheduled right after this. Um, <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's get out of this call so that all the recordings sort of go away and then we can come back in and just click on the the, the, the one right after because we're I'm happy to talk with you right now. Sure, sure. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Delightful. Bye-bye.